Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we want to look at ways to measure distances between point clouds. That is particularly important when we do the iterative process point alignment and ICP alignment. Um, I make the assumption that you already have um, started or activated your uh, Python point cloud environment. And uh, we are going to look at our uh, Jupyter notebook called distance metrics between point clouds that you can access on the um, uh, GitHub environment. So I'm going to start my Jupyter lab and I'm going to walk through this um, uh, notebook. So this is slowly starting up here. Okay, uh, so what we are doing here is working with um, synthetic point clouds. We are not going to use a real point cloud. We are going to use and create a synthetic point cloud that allows us to um, better understand the concepts of distance measurements because with a synthetic point cloud, we know the exact distance uh, between uh, point clouds and we can better control uh, what the shape is, look, what the shape looks like and other parameters. So I'm starting out here by uh, importing some uh, Python modules and defining some functions. Uh, so I bring in uh, my NumPy, I'm bringing in my CKD tree, and I'm also bringing in matplotlib pyplot for visualization purposes, and I'm also bringing in Open3D, and all of those you are already familiar with. And I'm also defining a three-dimensional rotation function that is nothing but uh, a linear algebra approach to uh, performing a rotation along the x, y, and z axis uh, of a given point cloud. So this is a simple application of a, um, a rotation matrix. And I'm also defining a function that allows us to draw two point clouds in Open3D. We already looked at this, uh, both using a uniform color for each the point cloud separately. And I'm also defining the function that allows us to generate our own uh, color scale. So let's uh, get this loaded. And uh, in the first step, we are going to create a synthetic point cloud, and we are going to use a Gaussian hill um, or a rotational body of a Gaussian function. So you all know what a Gaussian function uh, looks like, um, and uh, we are essentially rotating this uh, function in 3D, and that turns out to be a Gaussian hill. And the Gaussian hill is a common synthetic environment because um, it's not too simple meaning that curvature is changing along that function uh, and slope is changing along that function, um, but it's still derivable. So you can still derive um, uh, an, um, uh, an analytic, analytical uh, uh, solution to the to, to a, a exponential uh, Gaussian Hill function. And what we are doing is we are going to create a point cloud with a thousand points um, uh, with random x and y coordinates. So our random x and y coordinates, um, you generate a thousand uh, coordinates. Um, uh, these, these points lie between zero and one. We are multiplying them by two. And uh, so essentially meaning the range is from zero to two. And then um, we are subtracting one, which means the range goes from minus one to plus one. And we are doing both of this in the x and y direction. And then we are uh, generating our um, ex expo exponential function uh, minus x squared minus y squared. That's the rotational body. And we are stacking this into a NumPy array using the x and the y coordinates. So this is a very uh, simple and quick way of generating a point cloud between minus one and plus one and having an exponential Gaussian Hill function. Um, and let's uh, look at this. We are going to pass the color or we are going to create um, uh, an open 3D data set from our point cloud P. Um, and we cre create a, a color range that ranges along the Z axis and we are just um, uh, limiting the minimum and the maximum value of our color scale to the second percentile and to the 98th percentile. We are gener generating our point cloud. Um, we bring in our points here and we bring in our colors um, and uh, we are drawing our point cloud. So this goes fairly quick. And looking at our point cloud, I think we can all appreciate the fact that this is a fairly smooth Gaussian hill. I'm rotating this around and you see the 
uh, generally uh, similarly curved space in all directions. So this is our um, uh, Gaussian hill. Uh, that is one point cloud. So this is our point cloud P. And uh, we generate uh, a second point cloud Q um, that we just offset and rotate a little. And we are going to rotate our point cloud P using our linear algebra approach that I defined earlier. And I'm rotating it uh, by an angle pi over 100. You know that pi is 180 degree rotation in Cartesian coordinates. And I'm saying, okay, rotate this um, roughly 180 divided by 100. So roughly by 2 degrees in the x, 2 degree in the y, 2 degree in the z direction. So it's a very small rotation. I just wanted to move it a little bit. And then I'm offsetting the point cloud uh, by uh, the value 0.5 in the x direction, 0.5 in the y direction, and 0.1 in the z direction. I'm just adding these uh, to the coordinates, so that means I'm offsetting them, uh, offsetting the second point cloud slightly. Everything else remains the same. So that point cloud has the same characteristic. I just off I just rotated a little bit and offset it. Um, so let's. Uh, display this point cloud. So now um, we are going to uh, bring our point cloud into uh, Open uh, 3D. So that will make visualizations a little easier. So I have my uh, point cloud, our point cloud Q with the values from Q and also um, a separate RGB value. And I'm going to draw this point cloud, or I'm drawing both point clouds, point cloud P and point cloud Q, in separate uh, colors. Um, so here you see the two point clouds. One is our, the orange one is our initial point cloud, and the uh, blue one is the one that we rotated by a small amount and also offset. By a small amount, you can you know you can visually see the distance between those point clouds, and this is what we are going to measure uh, or try to quantify in the in the next uh, steps. Um, and uh, uh, the uh, a nice way of doing this is using uh, KD trees, and we are going to use SciPy spatial CKD trees because that's a quick and fast implementation. And I just wanted to point out again that I can access our XYZ coordinates, essentially what we feed into our KD tree by uh, calling NumPy as array and then uh, our uh, point values. So this is one way of um, accessing our point um, information. We can also just refer to P our NumPy arrays. These are the same um, uh, the same coordinates. This is actually a deep copy of this, meaning that if you delete P, uh, the NumPy array, our PCDP um, point cloud from Open3D will remain in memory. memory. Okay, uh, the common ways of calculating um, distances between point clouds um, uh, have specific names and specific approaches. They are all based on the approach of determining the um, distribution of all distances between the points and then either selecting the maximum, mean, or some other way of calculating statistics between the distances. And these are usually referred to Hausdorff, modified Hausdorff or Chamfer distances. Um, uh, here we are going to uh, um, uh, walk through this and I'm starting out by introducing how you calculate the distance between uh, uh, two point clouds. Uh, so you bring in your CKD tree if you haven't done so. We have point cloud A and point cloud B. This is essentially point cloud P and Q. I'm calling this A and B now because you may want to bring in your own data sets here. Um, um, and so that's, uh, this will keep it fairly um, flexible. So you just would need to put in your own data sets here and then you can continue to work with A and B. And um, we are calculating the distances. So we are calculating the distances from A to all points in B and from B to all points in A. And we are only uh, looking at um, the nearest neighbor. So we are taking our point cloud, um, our orange point cloud. I um, can, can go back here to the visualization. Um, so what we are now doing is we are taking every point in the orange data set and we are looking at the closest neighbor in the blue data set. So if we have this point here, for example, we are looking at the blue data set, where is the closest distance? It's maybe this point, and we are storing this distance. And we are doing this for all orange points, 
And we're doing this for all blue points back to the orange points. And this is what we are storing in, uh, in our distance vector. D1 and D2 are the distances from A to B and from B to A. And that gives us a distribution because we have a thousand points in our point cloud and we can now plot the distances for all of those points. And this is uh, a typical thing that you end up doing, visualizing the distances um, um, and the distribution. So we can just plot a histogram of these uh, values. So D1 and D2 now uh, contain a thousand measurements of distances, uh, always to the closest neighbor. And we can say that we are generating 50 bins. Um, they are linearly spaced between zero and then the maximum distance. Um, and we can plot our histograms um, oops, I'm sorry, I did not run this. Um, uh, and we can plot our histograms that then look something like this. So our histogram from the distance from P to Q um, is the blue line. Um, um, the, most of the distances lie around 0.5. And the other way around from orange to blue um, is, uh, the, uh, is, is shown in, 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 in orange. And um, uh, this is something that is a distribution or the, the distance is shown as a distribution, but we can also plot this as a, as a map. So we can, for example, take our uh, um, uh, point cloud A and B. We calculate the mean of this just to make sure that both point clouds are aligned. We are using this as a reference value. It's not really necessary, but it's usually a nice thing to do, specifically when you're working with UTM coordinates. So that's why I'm um, sub subtracting this uh, here from the initial coordinates. It's not necessarily for this, ne not necessary for this specific example, uh, but for others it may be necessary. And I'm coloring the point cloud by the distance. And I'm, I'm plotting both the distance from A to B and the distance from B to A, and I'm um, um, coloring each of the points according uh, to their uh, distance. So this gives us a spatial map. This is a map um, where we have the distances as the color of the points. These are now arbitrary units. If you use UTM data sets, this would be in meters. And you see this is the distance from the original data set to the offset data set. And the largest distance we find in the lower left corner, because this is where the distance to the blue data set would be the largest. And then um, uh, the higher overlap we have between the point clouds, the lower the distances become. So this is a spatial visualization of this. This is just the other way around from that um, rotated and translated point cloud back, back into P. And um, if we want to, uh, if we want to um, uh, simplify that distribution, we may want to take a single value of it. It's obviously not useful to take just the mean of it because this is not a Gaussian distribution. Um, um, and so there exist different methods uh, 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 to do this. And one common method is the Hausdorff distance. Um, it is uh, just using the maximum distance between two sets of points. Uh, this is essentially the worst case scenario. In other words, um, if you have outliers in your data set and an outlier is away, a single point in a in 100 million points is away uh, from the rest of the data, then you end up getting a very large Hausdorff distance. So this is a, the maximum um, um, of those distances that we just calculated. So this is a very simple um, calculation that allows us to get the uh, Hausdorff distance. So it's the maximum of the maximum of each of the distances from A to B and from B to A. Um, and I'm calling this Hausdorff distance. Um, it's spelled with a double F here. I'm just abbreviating this here. Um, and our maximum distance is 0 point, uh, 0 0.7. So this is this one single point um, that is offset. And we can argue about if this is uh, useful, uh, but that's definitely something um, that, that can be done uh, to get the worst case scenario. If you have a relatively clean point cloud, this is usually uh, a very conservative approach uh, and is also useful in many instances. Um, I just want to point out where this point uh, is located. Right now here in the previous spatial 
plot, you see the distances going from zero to roughly 0.55, uh, because we are scaling it between the second and the 98th percentile. Here is the distance 0.71. Um, so we want to change uh, the color scale to the entire range. And we see that down here at that far corner, we then have the distances of 0.7. Most of the other distances are much lower, but they, it's enough if one point has that maximum distance. So this is um, the Hausdorff distance. Um, some people said, well, that's, that's a really strict and conservative approach, and therefore a uh, different um, um, approximation has been proposed, and that's what some people call the modified Hausdorff distance, but there exist uh, other names for this. Um, generally, the modified Hausdorff distance is considered to be something more um, realistic because it takes the mean of the minimum distances between two sets of points. So it takes the mean of all distances from A to B, the mean of all distances from B to A, and um, uh, we take the maximum value of this. Um, uh, there are different detailed definitions. You can look at those links that provide some um, uh, additional basic uh, uh, information on it. Um, uh, I'm implementing this um, Hausdorff, the modified Hausdorff distance. I'm calling this MH, or the short version would be MHD. Um, I'm saying give me the mean distance. Uh, from A to B, the mean distance from uh, B to A, and take the maximum value of this. Um, and that is the modified Hausdorff uh, distance. Running this tells us, uh, gives us a much lower distance, um, which is uh, uh, probably comparable to the average distance. Um, of this. So this is something um, that is likely a more realistic uh, a parameter that helps us to evaluate how useful an uh, iterative closest point uh, iteration went and how well this has been done. Um, uh, there is another approach that can be implemented in different ways. So we went from the worst case scenario, the Hausdorff, to an average scenario, the modified Hausdorff, and now we are at the end of the spectrum at the um, best case scenario that is using the minimum distance. Um, um, so uh, usually we can um, uh, use this uh, in or the, the different implementations and also different uh, distances in it. Um, the, the way uh, this is implemented in PDAL and in other uh, point cloud uh, libraries is usually um, uh, you take the squared distance and then the mean of it, and then you, you sum this up. Um, uh, so this gives us um, a, a nice value of the lower uh, bound of it. Um, so this is implemented uh, like this. So the distance here would be 0.24 is a mean minimum distance in that sense. Some people implement this also by taking the sum of all distances, um, um, which is uh, essentially adding up uh, the numbers of points as well. So this this matrix uh, this metric would be highly dependent on the number number of points. Both are used in the literature and in approaches, and both have their usefulness. Um, last but not least, I just wanted to point out that there are um, uh, other more sophisticated uh, um, distance metrics, um, uh, most notably the Earth Movers distance. Um, that's um, something that is uh, including um, uh, a much more precise measurement between uh, points, but it's also computatively more intensive. Um, we are not going to look at this now. This is something that we can worry about when we uh, uh, worry about the millimeter scale uh, distance uh, application. For now, uh, being familiar with the Hausdorff, modified Hausdorff and chamfer distances um, is useful for understanding metrics to evaluate uh, ICPs. Because uh, when you move a point cloud versus each other and you're recalculating the distance, you have a metric how well or how much better uh, those two point clouds uh, have been aligned.